Then I find out that in 2018, the government of Massachusetts, senior officials in the Republican Party, Democrat Party, SISA had all met together at the Belfer Institute, which is an institute at Harvard called Defending Democracy. They always call it something anodyne, you know, Defending they, Democracy. They, they call it something absolutely contrary to the actual exactly. purpose. And the guy that is ahead of this is Robbie Mook, who was Clinton's campaign manager, okay? And they put out, and the head of that Belfer Center is a guy who came out of the Pentagon. I forget his name. He's on that diagram. If you see our diagram, you'll see it up there on winbackfreedom.com. So these guys had felt it was Jared Dobb to defend democracy. And they had put together a playbook, part one, part two, which was called the Election Influence Operators Playbook for state and local officials. And in this playbook, they actually have sentences which say, if someone questions elections being corrupt, they should be bl blacklisted, okay? They should be watched. So I was saying these elections may be corrupt. Playbook two gives a step-by-step -step SOP, those people don't know in engineering terms, standard operating procedures. Step one, watch them. Step two, identify who they are. And it gives severity levels and they give a sort of an algorithm. Are they of credibility? Okay, an MIT PhD may be credible. Do they have lots of followers? Yes. Do they have high engagement? If they are, they're a high severity influence operator, okay? It's in black and white. And I'm reading this shit. I can't believe this. I wanted to let you know that we use the technology here. We've helped many, many companies over the last 16 years, a lot of smart, innovative companies, but we decided with all the mathematical models we've created, why don't we try to use this to compute the best product we could think of from the science out there for reducing pain and inflammation, pain and discomfort. And that resulted in us creating MV25 using Cytosol. We're gonna have more products that are gonna be coming, but let me just show you what MV25 is about for those of you who haven't heard about it, but this is using Cytosol in a beneficial way, not to just do research, but find combination therapies. Hi, I'm Barbara Ann. My hands would cramp up so that I couldn't hold cards or knit or crochet. And they would go like that. Not have to use this when I played cards with my grandkids. And I started taking that MV25. After a bit, I was able to hold cards in my hand. Very, very little cramping, hardly at all anymore. MV25. Hi, my name is Sandy. I'm a Taekwondo instructor. I tore my ACL during Taekwondo. I had a lot of pain and limited mobility. I've been taking the MV25 for about six months now. After the first week, I noticed a big difference. After the second week, almost literally no pain. My name is Jeremy and I suffer from a lower back problem. Hurt my back at work years ago and I can go to the chiropractor, do all kinds of different things and nothing seems to help. And I decided to try MV25. I didn't notice a difference immediately, but within a few days the pain went away and it stayed away. I've continued to take it and even when I do things that I shouldn't do, it seems to go away a lot quicker than it ever did before. It's clean food certified, it's made in the US. If you go to bashiva.com right on the shop, you'll click there or you can go right to mv25.life either way. And then from there, you can click on the bottle and you can order. If you buy six bottles, you get six bottles for free. Please take advantage of it because first of all, it's going to help you. It's going to help our movement. And it really supports the fact that we want to take science-based approaches to natural products. And then it shows after you find them, first mark them and then continue monitoring them. And I said, this is exactly what happened to me. I was marked on September 25th and I was continually monitored. That's why I was being platformed. And they call it influence. They don't call it interference. So it's, exactly. it's, just, it's, a, it's a beautiful euphemism. Yes, it's all euphemism. Euphemism after euphemism. And in that document, they have the Twitter partner support portal, a similar way that you communicate with Facebook and YouTube. Okay, it's all and, right there. And nobody nobody ever denied the authenticity of this document. Even the government recognizes. Or no, admits. no, but I was the first one to find it and bring yeah. it, expose it in broad daylight. It, by the way, the academics are very interesting. They will write shit over here, you know, and, the, and they think they've done their noble duty, but they won't become activists and take it out to the public, right? Because they want to have their cake and eat it too. Oh, I exposed that back. I talked about it, right? So anyway... So I put all this together and and I didn't get that much sleep. The next morning is our hearing. And, you know, there's close to a thousand people on the Zoom hearing, David. It was like everyone was coming there to watch this. It wasn't like no one knew about this. And remember, I'd already sent Tucker Carlson the May, the October 15th email, the October 30th email saying, we won, Tucker, you should cover this. Nothing. Silence. Everyone remember, October 30th, 2020. Okay. So now 
on May 22nd, if my date's right, I go into and I'm sitting in the same room I am like this. And there's a thousand people there. They have all their seven lawyers, the three top lawyers from Wilmer and Hale representing Twitter. Okay. The three lawyers from the Secretary of State and the one lawyer representing NASA. So seven lawyers against me. Okay. So I give my opening statement and I say, Your Honor, all of these defendants have been lying to you saying they don't know each other. I said, let me open this document. He goes, what is that document? I said, Your Honor, these are documents called playbooks that all of these people authored and their names are right here. And they authored these documents to silence the speech of US citizens silently using these backdoor portals. And that's what they've done. And he goes, what are you talking about? So I start reading from him. He goes, I need you to submit that as evidence right away. The chief legal counsel at Twitter had submitted. Also, she said, oh, Your Honor, Dr. Shiva's lying. He wasn't thrown off. We went through a serious process over 36 hours. You know, when we saw that tweet, we had people review it overseas and we did this, this. And I said, Your Honor, she's lying. He goes, what do you mean? He goes, I was thrown off in 17 minutes. That didn't occur by any review. And so we had to file another affidavit exposing her. And he basically reprimanded. This is a lawyer, Stacia Cardilla, okay? Who's no longer a Twitter. So all of this we're doing on our own. Uh, let me just stop you there though. The judge says, admit this, th this document has to be filed as evidence. So yeah. make whatever, and it is in fact admitted as evidence. Yeah, so we, yeah, so you can see it on, on winbackfreedom.com. So I, not only do I submit all those playbooks as evidence, but I also submit my exposing Stacia Cardilla who was a legal counsel, associate legal counsel, would lied saying that they went through this very interesting process and, you know, a committee met. Bullshit. I was thrown off in 17 minutes. No committee met, meets in 17 minutes at night. Okay. And that same day when I was thrown off, I found a conference proceeding where Stacia Cardilla was at the same cocktail dinner with the Secretary of State of Massachusetts Legal Counsel. It's a big, it's a, it's a big club, Dr. Shiva, and we ain't We're in it. <laughs> right. So, so anyway, what happens is the the judge is like, it's supposed to be a two-hour hearing. It goes on and he's questioning Twitter. He lets me give my opening statements, etc. He says, I want to have another hearing tomorrow. So second day we go in and the judge starts a hearing. He says, you know, before I start this hearing, I want to say I got up at six in the morning and I read everything Dr. Shiva presented. And he goes, This case will be taught in every constitutional law class in the United States. And then he looks at me and he goes, look, you've done all this on your own and it's quite impressive. And by the way, Wilmer and Hale, uh, uh, Twitter's chief legal counsel started accusing me that I had shadow counsel. Who she cares? Goes, we don't, shadow counsel means they couldn't believe the quality of my brief. No, I know, but like, what, what difference would that make? Okay, so you have shadow I, counsel. I, I, but I didn't. But the thing was, that's how good my briefs were, man. I mean, just to put it in context, I'm saying I work my butt off. I learned, I learned a lot of stuff and I love the law in many ways. It's actually fascinating. It's like piecing together a very interesting puzzle. So, in the in that morning, the judge says, I went through his thing and he goes, you know, he says, this will talk, be taught in every constitutional law class. And then he goes, would you like me to appoint you a lawyer? I've told you that I think you should get your own lawyer. He goes, I have the authority to take funds and I've done, it's been rarely done. It's typically done in criminal cases for public defense, right? Yeah. I can give you a constitutional lawyer. You know what? I'm so cynical right now when the federal judge, if anyone says that, I'll but give you a lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. But the thing was, you see, I was working my butt off day and night, David, you got to understand, and running a campaign and running my companies. You know, I do this full time, right? I mean, I'm doing all this stuff. I probably got two hours sleep, right? So I said, okay, I said, I'll consider it. And he said, this guy's name is Howard Cooper. And I want you to meet with him. Howard Cooper is a senior partner at a firm called Todd and Weld. And I didn't know this. Howard Cooper was representing Dershowitz at the time, who was fighting the Jeffrey Epstein, that whole area. Okay. So anyway, I take Todd and Weld. And the goal was that Cooper was going to take my briefs and brief them even better so it could survive appellate review. Right. Yeah. Because, and it's the signals where the judge wanted to, you know, give me a victory. Okay. That's what the signals were. Right. Cause he wanted to be, you know, he said, you know, this case, you know, I wish, cause he had been in the Whitey Bulger case and you could see the judge wanting to be the judge who ruled on a major precedent. All right. So that hearing was set for July, seven weeks later. So during that time, I'm keep calling Cooper. I said, Cooper, have you done the memorandum of law? In my lawsuit, everyone should understand all the viewers. I wasn't just looking to go back on Twitter like Berenson was. Okay. I wanted to hold these individuals individuals accountable in their personal capacity, David. And you know, you have to overcome qualified okay. immunity. Well, I was gonna say, you might right. be going after a prize that you're not going to ever get. Anywhere. Right. But I had the predicates and the statutes for it. Okay. And Cooper, I presume the punchline of this is going to be Cooper is going to say, I'm not doing that, or you're not going to succeed. Well, well what happened was the judge, the goal was he should brief it up. In fact, the judge said, Howard will help you. It was never drop any claims, right? Yeah. That was never in the discussion. So as weeks go by three days before everything's due, Cooper had frankly done nothing. Okay. Nothing. And who's, I said, pay, who's, who's paying him? I'm paying him. You're paying Cooper. Yes. And not not discount just to try to understand a discounted the... rate. A discounted rate. Okay. Yeah. 
a discounted well, rate. May I ask what that discounted rate is in the States? Or we're talking like 500 uh, bucks an hour? I think it was like 300 bucks for, yeah. you know, these guys charge 800 bucks an hour, right? Yeah. So anyway, three days before he says, you know what? It's basically my way or the highway. You have to drop, you should be lucky to get back on Twitter. You'll make history. You know, this lawsuit will go down in history, but you should drop all the claims against them. I said, Howard, you don't even want to try, you know, because I had the predicates and people have won. So anyway, he didn't think I was going to fire him. I said, you know, Howard, you're fired. So in three days, David, I had to do all those briefs. So you, you fire him and you don't ask for an extension for the hearing because you- No, I did ask for an extension. So I fired him and I found a lawyer that I knew to help me because remember the judge's order was have a lawyer and bring this guy in, but he was on vacation. And typically lawyers are congenial to other lawyers, right? Typically. So he calls up the other counsel and goes, look, I need an extension, okay? And the other lawyers are saying, oh, Howard was such a great, <laughs> such a great lawyer. Why did you get rid of him? He was so great. I'm like, the de defendant's lawyers are praising my lawyer. And so they wouldn't give us an extension. 